Hey folks, Joseph Isabora here, doing another movie review this week. And eventually I'm reviewing a movie that's already celebrating its 25th anniversary. That came out on July 2nd, 1993. In case of that matters, um, I'm talking about the romantic comedy Son-in-Law. Yeah, with Pauly Shore who at the time was very popular on MTV and just had a major hit with Encino Man with Brendan Fraser and Sean Astin. So this was his second movie. Not really his second film, but but this was going to be his second hit that was coming out in the summer of 1993. Um, but it also stars Carlo Gugino the real star of the film, in my opinion, along with Patrick Renna from The Sandlot. It also features Lane Smith from The Mighty Ducks, and as well as um, Timothy Amber Thiessen from Saved by the Bell and Belby Hills 912-0, several others. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Polly Shore, per se, I mean, granted, though, I mean, he is very obnoxious, weirdo, wild, and, and basically a stoner, in a way, when it comes to his uh, personality of comedy. But, I liked him in a few films that he has done. I didn't mind Encino Man, as I mentioned, which I saw in theaters as a kid. My dad hated it, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, he even hated uh, Pauly Shore, so, yeah, I, I can see why, you know, some critics uh, literally uh, pan him to death all the way. Um, but I don't hate the guy. I think he's okay. He's, he's likable at times, even if he is obnoxious and weird. But, hey, that's just me. Um... I also did like In the Army Now, which he was also in, uh, with Andy Dick, as well as David Allen Greer, Lori Petty, uh, Lynn Whitfield, all come to mind. Um, I also did enjoy uh, his voice acting in a Goofy movie, and I did enjoy him as as Charlie Schlatter's character's best friend in the movie 18 Again with George Burns come to mind. Yeah, that was his earlier role, even back when he was doing MTV. Um, and I know he had a TV show for a while, which was short-lived on Fox. That was back in 97. My least favorite of his was, and still is, Jury Duty with Tia Carrera, along with Abe Bogota and Shelley Winters, and Bayard Dome with Stephen Baldwin and Kylie Minogue, along with uh, William Efferson from Ghostbusters and Die Hard. Yeah, the man who has no dick. <laughs> okay, okay, I don't want to get to that subject. And he was okay in The Bogus Witch Project, which is a parody of the Blair Witch Project, but it was kind of dumb. I'll be and pretty forgettable and lame. But I think he was the only good fan about the movie, sadly. <laughs> to me, I like this movie the most out of his entire photography. Mostly because uh, this was a heartwarming and hilarious zany comedy. Um, plus, I love Carl Gugino in the film, and I thought she was stunningly hot as the farm girl yeah, from her family, who was just ready to attend to college in California, you know, just to you know spend time in a dorm or you know trying to you know trying to do well in college until yeah you know, she and her family uh, bumps into which he's the resident advisor uh, that's played by Polly Shore. And 
since then, you know, she, you know, she's having some problems, and he thought maybe the best idea was to have um, Polly Shore's character just, you know, change her life around until she finally comes back uh, with her family for Thanksgiving. But just brings in the um, you know, Polly Shore's character on the side, so so it basically plays out like guess who's coming to dinner. 90s style. <laughs> That's her way. So, let's put it this way. If you're not the biggest fan of Polly Shore, give this movie a watch. I mean, maybe watch it just for the, the families. And especially if you're a huge fan of Carlo Gugino and Patrick Renna, because they were the best fans about the movie, in my opinion. As well as Timothy and Feeson or whatever. I, I think it's worth it. So, I'm, I'm just going to review the movie as as we continue. Uh, once again, stars Polly Shore, Carl Gugino, Lane Smith, Cindy Pickett, Mason Adams, uh, Patrick Wenna, Dennis Berkeley, Timothy Amber Feeson, Dan Galdier. With special cameo appearances by Brendan Fraser and Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's written by Patrick Clifton, along with Susan McMartin, Peter M. Lanku, Fax Bayer, Adam Small, and Sean Sheps. And it's directed by Steve Rash. Yes, the same director who gave us the Buddy Holly story. But he also went on to direct films like Can't Buy Me Love, uh, Queen's Logic, and even the the other two uh, direct-to-video sequels of Bring It On. Yeah, come to mind. The movie began set in South Dakota, starting with the graduation day of Lincoln High School. That's where we meet uh, Rebecca Warner, who happens to be the farmer's daughter of the Warner's family, yeah, which includes uh, Walter, her father, Connie, her mother, Zach, her brother, as well as uh, Walter Sr., yeah, Walter's uh, father, and of course her grandfather. Well, anyway, um, she also has uh, her best friends, uh, Tracy and Travis. Tracy is her best friend, played by Timothy Amber Feeson. And Travis is her boyfriend. Yeah. He's played by Dan Gontier. Anyway. And of course, the Warners are played by yeah, Lance Smith, uh, Cindy Pickett, Patrick Renna, and Mason Adams. So she was getting ready to attend college at Cal State University in Northridge. But during her first day, um, she along with her parents were just moving in with all of her stuff inside her dorm room, where she had a roommate who happens to be a lesbian. Eventually they met Crawl, that's his name, Crawl, who's played by Polly Shore, who's the residence advisor for Rebecca's uh, dorm. So after they left, um, Becca was basically having some negative experience or something that was going around with all the clashes of cultures that's happening that eventually she wants to go back home. But Qual decided to give her an advice to give it a chance and just to experience the California life. So during the the next couple of days, she begins to spend time with Crow, you know, going around um, getting a beauty makeover, you know, trying to look more hot and sexy. <laughs> yeah, you know, she she dyed her hair to um, I think a strawberry blonde, if you think about it. So you know, just looking, and she even got a tattoo of a butterfly. 
And then they just go around uh, rollerblading at Ben's Beach, you know, just hanging around. You know, just uh, looking at all the binoculars of of spotting a <laughs> a hot chick and a and a hot bud you know, together. <laughs> and then they went mud wrestling. Yeah, with all the girls mud wrestling around, but that's where we get to the scene where <laughs> and she offers uh, crawl to to mud wrestle with <laughs> a giant uh, woman. <laughs> So, by the time uh, Thanksgiving break had arrived, um, that's when Becca decided to join Crawl to meet her family and just to spend time at their farmhouse in South Dakota. But, I mean, once she came back, they were very stunned and shocked how everything has changed, you know, throughout the course of three months or so. And apparently, Travis was already feeling very upset and jealous that he had to put up with Crawl for the past you know, couple of days. And also, not to mention, Walter was going on the wrong foot, too. Anyway, if that wasn't bad enough, uh, Becca begins to realize that that Travis actually wants to propose a marriage to her. But she urges Crawl to speak because she wasn't really ready for it. That was the problem. So, apparently uh, Crawl had trouble trying to find out what they were going to come up with. He decided to propose to, to Becca instead and try to be try to mention that they were engaged. So he actually gave uh, his ring that came from his hand to her. And Travis just got so mad that he actually punches Crawl in the face. At this rate, his nose. So his nose was bleeding. It also upsets her family as well because of that. But now that Crow is acting as a future son-in-law, he decided to spend some time with all these experience that he wants to do, such as farming, you know, and taking care with the family. Uh, with his experience uh, with Walter helping along, along with his uh, farmhand assistant Theo, which he happens to teach crawl the ropes on actually doing a lot of work. Where he has, he actually had to feed the animals, such as the pigs, the chickens, and of course he had to milk the cow, which where he accidentally hit the one tit and the cow actually pees on him. <laughs> and of course the animals do go out of control at times while he tries his best. And he even went on the tractor too, <laughs> which he accidentally uh, crashes through the fence. But he tends to get better and better as it follows. I mean, there's even a moment where you know, he drives around um, a, a big tractor where it actually tracks all the way straight to uh, the cornfields while he's playing the song by John Denver called Country Boy. <laughs> so, and that's where he puts his name, uh, Crawl, on the cornfields as the as a crop duster passes by. <laughs> that was a fun moment. He also helps out uh, Zax's computer since he's staying over at his room. So he actually knows how to hack a computer because eventually he was good at it when he was at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. <laughs> so. And on top of that, uh, he actually went out uh, for fishing yeah, you know, with uh, Walter and his father, Walter Sr., which eventually sh he had a heart attack. So, so Crawl decided to perform CPR on him, but unfortunately, Walter Sr. screams, <laughs> thinking that uh, Crawl was going to kiss him. That sort of thing. Um, 
He also helps out uh, Connie, which happens to be Becca's uh, mother, on giving her a beauty makeover and trying to make her look uh, sweet by picking out some really nice dresses so that way they get ready for a hold down dance going around. And and that's where he came along just uh, joining in the <laughs> The country life right there by actually uh, doing the square dance scene off uh, and yeah he jumps up with the crowd and and then the other guy just jumps in too but misses <laughs> that sort of thing so everything was going great I mean they had to deal with uh, the problems that between Crawl and and Becca to see if maybe they'll find a way because they only had a few days left before they decided who to be married between either Travis or at this rate Crawl. But that leads to bigger problems too because Travis suddenly um, decided to apologize to Crawl about the way he acted while during the the hold down dance and eventually he decided to throw in a bachelor party for him which that didn't go very well as smoothly as possible because it seems like part of this was a trick where he actually puts um, lots of pills inside a glass of beer and this is where Tracy wants up uh, performing a sexy dance uh, or crawl even though he was singing karaoke to the song Country Boy by John Denver. So he was blacked out and so was Tracy and they wound up inside the barn which Becca suddenly spotted them. I mean at first uh, she thought that I'm gonna put into words that crawl actually boned uh, Tracy but that never happened because it turns out that this was one of uh, Travis's schemes with Theo joined in that they were responsible for putting the pills inside their drinks and this is where just after Travis uh, berates uh, Tracy she found out that in her car which is uh, the Pontiac uh, Trans Am it's a very nice car she found uh, a bottle of pills that was inside and this is where she found out the real truth about this. But of course, um, Crawl decided to pack up and leave after what just happened. And by the time they find out the secret, that's when you know, Tracy uh, brought in the crawl along for the ride to to go back and just to speak the truth out about what Travis did and everything was all settled Travis got what he deserved at the end along with Theo because he was responsible for that and now they begin to learn that um, both crawl and Becca that they're just going to wait a few days or, or maybe maybe a few months or so just to decide for this and then now the family were together again and things are going very well so there we go so again I thought it was a very heartwarming romantic comedy it, it really works it was very hilarious at times and zany I really bought it very well, uh, even for a Pauly Shore comedy. Um, but granted, though, I thought Pauly Shore was okay. I mean, he was likable, despite of being, you know, wild, obnoxious, and weird. But I guess I could take it for what it's worth. Uh, but College of Gino, on the other hand, I mean, this is the real story. Because, to me, this is a movie about... Um, her character Rebecca Warner because this is a movie about her trying to express her life you know trying to see how everything's going or the fact that um, she wasn't so sure if 
if she's going to get married or not uh, with her boyfriend or I mean she's basically having hard times you know during her college life that she wants to spend time and or maybe if it's not working out then then she'll probably just go back home and spend time with the family yeah, that sort of thing um, but it's always cool too because you know they they always uh, pick on each other with her little brother uh, Zach I mean, and Patrick Renner is the best thing about the movie, too, because considering the fact that he plays Ham Porter in The Sandlot, he does come up with some funny dialogue that you can think of. I mean, I mean, it's strange, but it's almost like, yeah, he's pretty much playing Ham Porter throughout the movie. Uh, Lance Smith is very good, too, as the father, Walter, along with... Um, Cindy Pickett as uh, as Connie, yeah, Walter's wife, uh, as well as of course uh, <laughs> Walter Senior. That's played by Mason Adams. I mean, yeah, there's like times when you know he's just just not getting along with uh, Crawl very well, but they're just going around just uh, sitting on on the porch, you know, just making the a crane by a log to just creating it um, that sort of thing and then and, and then uh, interesting enough uh, for the cameos uh, Brendan Fraser actually had a small role as Link you know, from the movie uh, Encino Man where he just goes around just bringing in the match and he was about to eat uh, the frog <laughs> So I find that funny though too because it's like since Paulie Shore is just playing a different character that he wants to uh, basically he's just spotting the Link like he doesn't even know who he is. I mean, this <laughs> uh, Crawl was just dressed up in a Halloween costume as uh, <laughs> Carmen Miranda. Yeah, the uh, Brazilian singer and actress. Uh, who had food on her head and she just does all the dance moves everything and of course uh, you did spot uh, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers as the tattoo artist yeah, yeah this is when they were going to give Becca her tattoo which is a butterfly on her ankle yeah she got her uh, <laughs> even after she got her beauty makeover and you know, changing her hair and everything yeah, it's just some fun moments. I mean, I mean, again, I I love the farming moments too, where you know, where Qual was just trying to uh, trying to do better, was trying to work on the on feeding the animals, such as the pigs. And yeah, at first he had trouble with uh, one pig. It was a big one, but but then in the end, he, he learns, and he also. Uh, begins to ride his roller braids uh, by feeding them all the way straight also begins to help out with Zach uh, telling him how to uh, milk a cow exactly right <laughs> that sort of thing and of course um, the sexy dance moments with Timothy Amber Feenson as Tracy <laughs> uh, I, I mean during the bachelor party that he had um, very, love those moments and many others I could think of uh, uh, interesting enough though originally Paul Shore was actually going to do a movie for New Line Cinema which turned out to be called uh, Totally London where he becomes a male nanny you know, babysitting the British kids but I think that film somehow became uh, Mr. Nanny, which with Hulk Hogan, <laughs> yeah, along with Robert Gorman from Rookie of the Year, Forever Young, and even Leprechaun, and Madeline Zima, who eventually went on to do, guess what, the TV series called The Nanny, with Fran Drescher. Yeah. So this was exactly the movie that. Um, he had a bidding war between the two studios.
but he won the battle for, for Hollywood Pictures to, to become distributor for this film by Jeffy Katzenberg, who at the time was a former chairman of Disney. Yeah, before he went on to DreamWorks. Uh, anyway. And it was a, a moderated hit when it came out. I mean, out of its $20 million budget, it made over $46 million at the most. So I think it did pretty well. Um, but I, but in a way, I, I did enjoy the film. Um, I love Carl Giugino, and she's the best thing about the film, and so is Patrick Renna, as well as Lance Smith, Cindy Pickett, Mason Adams, uh, all the rest, and of course even the, uh, the actor, um, Dennis Berkeley as Theo, who <laughs> was teaching the once again, Crow how to show them the ropes and everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, another thing I like to mention, too, was that this was going to be a promotion for MTV, where at the time, Pauly Shore was actually going to marry someone in Las Vegas. So, this was a contest. So, by the time the movie comes out, um, that's when the wedding begins. So, that's where they chose um, a girl named Tanya. Sonati from Salisbury, uh, Massachusetts, because she won the honor for it and actually was re ready to get married to Polly Shore. But unfortunately, even though they had a ceremony, no marriage certificates were signed. So, go figure. What a promotion that turned out to be. <laughs> And of course, Travis, um, you know, Becca's boyfriend, turned out to be a jealousy jerk in the end, even though he started out as a nice guy at first. I guess it brings in the, the expression, nice guys finish last. <laughs> we'll figure. Um, yeah, I got mixed reviews when the movie came out. Um, I understand. Nobody's perfect. I mean... I know people hate Pauly Short's guts these days, but what can you do? <laughs> and I know this DVD had the cover art, which is eventually is a parody of American Gothic. Yeah, would you just see the farmers where they show one holding the the fork? Yeah, I know there was another poster where they actually did show him with the fork, along with uh, the duck, the pig. A cow. <laughs> so I'm actually going to use it as a thumbnail too. But still, it's cool. And this DVD, an old DVD, only has um, just a trailer, no other features included. And on top of that, it's a non anamorphic uh, widescreen transfer. Yeah. What can you do? I mean, I guess, you know, no one's perfect. So, I mean, if they had a featurette available online, I think that would have been cool. Maybe see some interviews, so to speak. But this is the best you could do for, for Disney. I hope it gets a Blu-ray release someday. Maybe they might be able to get all the new features coming around. I'm not even so sure if Paul Shore will be available to interview. But it would be nice to have Carl Gugino and maybe Patrick Renner joining in for the sake of it. I know Lance Smith's no longer with us. So, I don't know about the other cast, but whatever. And maybe Timothy Amber Fieser might take a chance at it. So, If they ever release it on Blu-ray. I mean, maybe uh, Kino Lober might take a chance at it someday. Uh, but either way, um, I love the movie. So... It's hilarious, it's fun, it's heartwarming, and I'll take it. <laughs> so anyway, I give Son of Law four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.